Welcome everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope you're all doing well in this new year. Today I wanted to reflect and kind of take a look at what we can expect from this year. Now before we do that, I want to stress today will be a rather economic video, okay? Never forget, stock markets are yes connected to the economy, but by no way would focusing on the economy be a good investment strategy. Never, ever forget that. This video is simply there to give you a better understanding of what's going on in the world economy right now, and also to kind of give you some information about the stock market, where are we at right now, and so forth. This is not a video that tells you next week stock, stocks will go up, or you know next month they will, or in a year from now we will be down, and so forth. Okay, having that said, interesting report came out from JP Morgan here a while ago now. JP Morgan, private bank, as we can see here, the Outlook 2023 CD potential, weaker growth, stronger markets. So I like this report a lot. I agree with many of the things that are going on here uh, and also on the investment side of things. So it's kind of a, a two-way report in that sense. Mostly it's economic, but there are some links here to the stock market and what we can kind of learn and learn from this report and kind of implement that into our investment strategies and so forth. Interesting report, I'll take you through it. Now, first things first, as you can see, you can see a little map here. This is 2022, the world of 2022 and all companies, or sorry, countries that raised interest rates, central banks that raised interest rates are marked in yellow here. Now, as you can see, this is a really substantial part of the world. There are a couple of things to note here, and actually it's slightly outdated here because I think Japan is actually not marked in orange yet. That is because all the way through through the end of 2022, all of a sudden they shocked the world by raising interest rates. Now, why is that so exciting? Why is that so weird? Because Japan has a huge deflation problem. They could have never seemed to get to, let's say, 2% inflation. It just couldn't work. It was always minus one or zero percent or perhaps half a percent, you know, but they never have had substantial inflation ever since their economic growth stagnated. And so, the COVID crisis and the money printing kind of changed this. They finally had a little bit of inflation, not much, but just a little bit. Nonetheless, the central bank in Japan raised interest rates, which kind of shocked the world. So that should be marked in, in orange as well. Now, I think most of the, the colors here we are very much aware of, obviously, right? In, in the Western world, we've seen a lot of interest hikes here. A couple of things to note, though, China, for example, not in orange here, and that is due to the fact that they actually do not have that inflation problem. Okay, so that is just a slight difference that, that might be important for investors out there, especially when you're in China. China has other problems, you could say, with debt levels, for example, but they certainly do not have an inflation problem. Now, let's take a look here. So, as we can see, hiking is kind of popular right now. And as we can see, it is the most aggressive Fed hiking cycle in four decades. Here you can see it. Very extreme, very rapid, and very, very aggressive. Now, why precisely is that? That is, of course, to tackle the big inflation numbers we have. And so it is kind of an attempt to aggressively start breaking off economic growth. That is ultimately what you want to do. It sounds very harsh, but eventually people losing their jobs, people not being able to go on that nice vacation anymore or, and so forth, and that slows down the economy, not being able to spend anymore. And that eventually is the only medicine to inflation. It is a painful medicine, that is for sure. And really, economy is everything in that sense. It controls people's lives to a whole, to a huge level. I mean, it's really quite incredible what the economy means to mankind. And so it is a tough decision to raise interest rates that quickly. And of course, a lot of debate about that. Are they doing it quickly enough or not? You know, what, what kind of is going on? There are many opinions about that, and it's very hard to say what's going on. But right now, we can say, hey, we've seen very aggressive uh, hikings, right? Very aggressive hiking cycle. And we also know that right now, they're going to be slowing down it a little. They've already started slowing down. They are still hiking, they're still raising interest rates, but at a much lighter pace and a much softer pace, and that is important to bear in mind. Now, this is an important finding. Higher rates will likely rein in growth. In other words, central banks seem right now 
seem to be successful in what they are doing. And that is important. So this means a couple of things, right? This already means, okay, if growth gets less, this is, well, bad for the businesses you own. Earnings might decline. Second, and this is important, for your personal life, this is relevant as well. People will lose their jobs. People might not get the loans granted as easily and so forth. This has substantial influence on your life as well. But the benefit of that, as you can see right here, is that the two-year implied inflation, so this is our expected inflation, right? As we can see here, the expected inflation is really not that bad anymore. And so it seems that central banks are successful in their pursuit to kill the inflation and hopefully go towards more sustainable levels of inflation. Now, then for the economists in the room here, we also see a treasury yield curve that is deeply inverted. So usually this means that recession is on the way. Now, once again, I, I kind of want to hold, you know, hold my opinions here because at the end of the day, this channel is about investing. This doesn't really matter for investing that much, right? Because it is so hard to predict if recessions will happen and what the impl impact is on stocks is completely, completely hard to predict. So don't attempt it. Don't forget that once more, that this is not really, you know, not really important for your investments as such, but certainly super important to understand what is going on in the markets right now. And as you can see here, demand is also softening for jobs here. So it is likely that this big peak that we've seen easily getting jobs and so forth, that is kind of over. Once again, what does this mean? It means that tougher times are ahead for us and for people in general. People might lose their jobs and so forth. You cannot switch jobs easily. But this also means that inflation will likely come down quite significantly. And that is important. Another important thing that I really want to stress here, also important for the investors in China, the global supply chain here is rapidly clearing. As we can see, the pressure on global supply chains is much, much lower and seems to be going down quite, quite rapidly here. So this is important. This is very interesting to note. And this might especially be good for China. They had a lot of global supply chain issues. Obviously, they are kind of the engine of the world still. So we need kind of the supply chain in order here. I mean, there has been a lot of trouble People that ordered something from Asia and didn't receive the packages for months and months and months on end and so forth. This will rapidly be changing as well. And that is, of course, great for especially Chinese business, I would say. Now, then quickly going through the economic predictions here. So U.S. recession more likely than not. It seems extremely likely that, you know, the U.S. will be in quite a tough economic year in that sense. Uh, and that is kind of kind of logical here. You also see it here in the housing market for those of you that are interesting. Obviously, as we can see here, we they do expect a downturn, but not something as big as the Great Recess Recession. Okay, so on the whole, it is a rather optimistic report, I would say. Now, China, same thing, ongoing property and COVID. Well, so as we can see, the COVID issues are kind of clearing right now. So that's already great. We do see, however, and this I very much agree with, reopening will be likely staggered, careful, and so forth. Focus on economic stability, not stimulus. Either way, still looking okay for China there. I think they expect about 4% growth or something like that. And Europe is in not so good shape, which makes a lot of sense. Europe, of course, has a lot of trouble. I mean, the European Union as such is already problematic. Right, You have the southern nations with such high debt levels, the northern countries with lower debt levels, but also not perfect debt levels, I would say. And then you have that big inflation number. So right now you, you have a kind of a, a problem. If you want to raise interest rates as aggressively as the US, for example, did, the Fed did, then you might seriously put pressure on the southern nations and their debt. And so it is, you know, the U, the the EU doesn't have the same tools as the US. They cannot raise interest rates as easily, and obviously they will suffer the consequences because of that. Now, going to the main message, because this is all economy, and economy, once again, is not super relevant for investing simply because it's so hard to predict. So, you know, what do you want to do? If something is super hard to predict, you kind of want to take that for granted, so to speak, and kind of focus on what you can predict and what you do have an influence on. And that is, of course, valuation to a certain extent. And I very much agree with the optimistic tone of this report, okay? The economy is, of course, a tough question. We will see what, what will be going on there. But in their investments, they are rather positive as well. So as we can see, valuation reset. It's a good time to put capital to work. 
I completely agree here. And look at this. This is what the bear market of 2022 has delivered. And this is so important. It is one of the best moments, as we can see here. It is the best entry point for stocks and bonds in over a decade. This is extremely true. Opportunity is here. As you can see, they made some predictions here. I wouldn't really care about the numbers that much. But the notion here that returns went up last year obviously makes a lot of sense. Bear markets are good. Bear markets mean that you can buy businesses cheaper and that your future returns will be much higher. Do not take that for granted. Okay, and that is important. And I like the fact that they make a little bit of a contrast here. So they say mm, the economy is not looking that great for 2023. Okay, inflation might come down, which is nice, but economies will likely not do that well. People will might lose their jobs and so forth. This is negative. This is negative news. But nonetheless, focus on the valuations in the market. Long term, things might go quite well. As we can see, valuations near long term average here for the S&P. As we can see, rapid decline here. In, in, in valuations. How come? Because the prices of stocks went down and earnings actually went up. So you see that double, kind of the double, the double sort here, bringing down valuations quite significantly. And bear in mind, see this huge contrast between 2021 and 2022. Right now, stocks are more appealing, much more appealing than they were before. It's quite terrible how highly valued it actually was. Tough to find some deals. Now, bonds, I would just skip Let's just immediately go to stocks. So obviously, they give some advice here, which I wouldn't really take, you know, that's it. I mean, everyone has their own style, and it's, it's always nice to just kind of look for opportunities and so forth. But I did like the fact that they suggest here that consider small and mid-cap companies could be a good idea. And this, of course, is a, I think I, I agree with that. I mean, small and mid-cap companies are a little bit harder to research, okay? They are harder to find, they're harder to come by, they are less research for sure, which means that there also lies opportunity within that. As we can see, valuations came down even harder for those businesses. So that is important to, to understand. Might be an interesting opportunity to take a look at. And that is basically it. As you can see right here, earnings are set to decline on the whole. Consensus expectations are still rather positive. Uh, GP Morgan is a little bit more negative. I would certainly expect the more negative scenario to, to, to hold true as well. Either way, once again, I want to stress it once more, one more time. It is about, it is not really about what we can kind of predict and what impact it would have on stocks. It is rather, hey, know what's going on in the market, what drives markets, and especially where lies opportunity. And I think this report shows that very well. It is called Outlook 2023, See the Potential. And that is exactly it. Economic times do not look fancy right now. Stock markets might not look fancy. We've seen a large cash outflow from private investors as well. Retail investors right now are selling stocks and are dropping out of the market. This is the worst thing you can do. You need to see the potential. You need to think long term. And that is the only way that you can win in the stock market. So never, ever, ever forget that. Now, that was all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, let me know what you want to do this year. What are the companies you're taking a look at? And what do you think? Positive or negative year for both the economy and or the stock market? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.